Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is the pole spears. There's a ton of different ways to set this up. The most simple and basic way is usually the best, and that's the way it comes. Um, Brad, the guy that, that owns Headhunter, he's a better spear fisher than me, and he really, really knows his, his gear. He's very technical, and he's constantly innovating, making things better. Um, the roller spear is nothing new. That's been around for, for many, many years. Um, a lot of companies have taken off with it. Personally, I really like it. Um, when I first used it, I wasn't a big fan, but I've come to love it. Uh, the one that I'm going to start with tomorrow, assuming we have good visibility, um, the fish are going to be up high, and I'm not really going to be shooting in holes that much, is going to be a Nomad with um, three sections, and it's basically a nine foot spear from start to finish. Um, the reason behind the, the roller, what I really like, is it, base, it gives you full punch at full range. Um, it's not as fast, but man, it's got so much punch. And I'm hoping for a fish kind of in that 25 to 28 pound class tomorrow, and I wanna be able to really thunk them. Um, the, the grip, like, the reason they have a grip here is they want you to be gripping it all the way up there. So when I'm shooting tomorrow, my hand is gonna be all the way up here, all the way up. Um, just be careful not to grab the this the um, the rubber band because that'll pull the pull the tip off if you give it too too much slack underwater. But I'm going to be holding that spear here. I'm going to keep it back, and then you'll see on the videos I'm going to extend and shoot like that. Um, the tip. This is just the tip that was on there. To be honest, I've got six of these spears. This is the one that I grabbed that was closest to the door. Um, it's got a. Uh, it does not have a, a cable um, tip up here. It's um, Kevlar or Spectra, and that's that's fine. I'm not worried about getting cut off by anything tomorrow. Worst case scenario, a shark gets it, he's, he's gonna cut it off. That way I don't lose my whole pole spear. Now for attaching the pole spear for the blue water stuff, and I mean, we're gonna probably be in 100, 150 feet of water, I'm gonna let go of the pole spear. I'm not gonna to try to skull drag him up to the surface. So the simplest, easiest way to attach this is on his little kind of triangle shaped D-ring looking thing. Just put that on there like that so that when I'm, when I'm loaded with this, hopefully I don't shoot the house here. When I'm loaded with this, you can see the float line comes up with me. It's the same concept if you've got a regular band, you want the float line to come all the way up with you that way when you let go of the spear, it can run freely. Too many people make the mistake of attaching the actual float line to the back of the spear. You're screwing yourself up because you're already pulling on the back of the spear as soon as you let it go and you're, you're cutting yourself short. Now the, the backup setup I have here is what I use for Wahoo um, sometimes I'll use it for African pompano fish that like to stay a little bit further away and you need that extra bit of reach. And this is a predator front section. This is another headhunter um, pole spear that is a little, little smaller diameter and it fits into the Nomad. So this is the difference in, the, in this spear here is another a couple of feet. So again, you can set it up a couple couple different ways, but it's a nice thin one. It's easier to dive deeper with, um, and it's just nice and light. It's easier to move through the water, but either one of these setups are great, and this is this is what I'm gonna to go for tomorrow for the, uh, the Red Snapper World Record. Okay, so this is my gun setup that I'm gonna use for tomorrow, and as you can see, it is brand spanking new. It is rare that you will see me have perfect gear unless it's straight out of the box. I use my stuff, I abuse it, I beat it up worse than anybody else and I treat it really bad. That being said, the gear that I have is tough. I, I don't wanna mess around with stuff that's gonna break. I don't wanna be away on a 10 day trip with clients and have them use gear that's, that's gonna break. I want tough stuff that's gonna last. This is one of my favorite guns that I've ever had and Aimright just um, shipped this one to me today. I bought it three days ago and uh, Kylie shipped it from Hawaii. 
It's a 115 single roller gun. It's carbon fiber. It's got a pretty cool kind of cuttle shape uh, barrel, cuttlefish shape, and a, a big reel. Um, they rigged it up, it looks like, with, I'm guessing, 400 pound mono. Oh, she only rigged one, so that's good. That makes it easier for me to show you guys. So, when I'm using a, um, when I'm using a reel, I try to use a pretty simple setup. We used to waste so much time on our small guns rigging monofilament up. And the line on these reels is so good now, I just tie the, I tie it straight off to there. This one came with a swivel. So basically I'll cut the swivel off. And hopefully it fits with this one. Sometimes you have to get one with shark fins up here with a hole in it so you can tie this off. But hopefully this will this will fit. So put it through there. And then I just tie a very basic bowling knot. I'm curious to see if this fits in there. Now this gun, I like it a lot because it's a single band, so it's easy easy to load, but this thing delivers a major punch. Um, I've got double floppers on here just for quickness and ease of use. Okay, so it fits in there, no worries. So instead of having a shooting line, I've got the line, uh, you can see what happened here, this like all unspooled because it's brand brand new and it hasn't been put back on the reel under pressure. So when you're pulling that, that first fish in, after you've got him in, I usually let go of the shaft and crank it on really tight. And it's just, it's never been wet. That's why it's, it's coming off like that. But um, yeah, it's set up super simple with this line. That way you don't have to do a bunch of crazy crimping and stuff at the end of every day. I always do a wrap and a half of line. And by wrap and a half, I mean, that's as far as you are ever going to shoot, or you should be shooting. Some people claim to want to be shooting 30 feet. You're not. You're not giving yourself much of a uh, margin for error, and you're probably not going to punch through most fish. So, a wrap and a half. I've got one wrap of line here, there, one length of line, I should say, and back to the reel. Um, I keep my reel set pretty light, so that. I use my hand as the drag. When the fish is running, I just use my hand as the drag. That way it's, it's ready to roll. If you have it cranked down, initially that fish can run, and especially with a brand new reel. You probably zoom in here and I'll show you kind of what's going to happen. So with this, this line like this, if you've got this reel cranked down, it's going to bury this into the spool. And then it's, it's difficult to get off and it, it this is how you lose guns. Everything gets tangled up and you end up losing it. So that's the setup. Um, got pretty good range with this thing. It's not what I would set out to go hunt tunas with, but uh, last year I shot about 150 pound yellowfin with this and stoned him. Um, he came up in a, in a bait ball when I was looking for big skipjacks and I shot him from five feet down, stoned him, grabbed the reel, pulled him up and just held him to me as like all these sharks came around and the boat came over and gaffed and we had him in the boat in like 30 seconds. So this, this gun can, can do the job. Uh, with those bigger fish, you gotta be closer, but for snapper and stuff, grouper, um, African pompano, cobia, the things that we're gonna see tomorrow, this is a perfect, simple, easy setup. Um, uh, the reel on it, um, I forget how much line this carries on it. I would guess probably 150 feet or so, so that's more line than I'll ever need. Um, I've got an extra shaft as a backup, and I think we're good to go. Hope you've enjoyed um, my setting up for Red Snapper diving on the east coast of Florida. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and we'll do more of these.